Hello, I'm Tyler, this is the Imaginary Axis, and if you're watching this right now, then congratulations. You're a minority. Not because I have some kind of divine knowledge about your race or heritage, but because there is a 100% chance that you are alive. Which is extremely rare. In fact, if we were to pick 100 human beings at random from anywhere in the world, 93 of them would be dead. But don't worry, that's okay. Death is just as natural as life. It's a cycle, like the passing of the seasons. First you sprout out of the ground, grow big and healthy, produce some seeds to continue your legacy, and then you're harvested for the winter. Life continues on. In fact, maybe that's the very reason we depict death with a farming site for harvesting. But some things don't follow the natural order. The tree that never loses its leaves, the jellyfish that controls its own age, and, well... Hey there, you can call me Deadpool. Yeah. Ow. Deadpool is a Marvel anti-hero primarily known for his ability to heal from almost anything, and widely believed to have one of the best healing factors in all of fiction. Yes, even better than Wolverine's. He's had his head stabbed, sliced off, blown off, his body pummeled, torn to shreds, liquidized, entire vital organs ripped out of him, he's regenerated from almost nothing time and time again, and so naturally the question arises, can Deadpool die at all? Well... crap. Well, in order to understand if we can kill Deadpool, we first need to understand how his healing factor works. Real name Wade Wilson, Deadpool's regenerative powers were implanted into his genes as part of a super soldier program called Weapon X. The poor mercenary was suffering from terminal cancer at the time, and this special treatment was supposed to cure his condition and make him better than ever, but it didn't quite go as planned. You see, right now your body is made up of about 37.2 trillion cells. So many that even though they're too small to see, if we lined them up one by one in a row, we could circle the Earth 19 times. In a healthy person, those cells perform basic functions to keep you... you. Making up your tissue, protecting your body, burning nutrients, sending messages, transporting important resources to the places that need them, and of course, producing new cells to take over when they die. Each cell follows a set of instructions called DNA, and when the cell divides, it copies that DNA. All of it. Over 3 billion nucleobases. An extremely long and complex message about exactly what the cell should do, how it should do it, and when. Which is hard. And sometimes mistakes are made. Mutations. Don't worry, not all of them are bad, in fact, most mistakes don't affect anything at all, but if it does affect something important, like making the cell divide uncontrollably, refusing to stop, spreading to parts of the body it doesn't belong, we call that... cancer. And in Deadpool's case, his healing factor was added to his mutated DNA to counteract this process. His cells were told to recognize when other cells were damaged and quickly reproduce them. So in a way, his healing factor is... cancerous. What would normally only divide into harmful tumors now recreates entire body parts if the need arises, both preventing the cancer from killing him and allowing him to return from the edge of death over and over and over. In a lot of ways, it might look impossible to put Deadpool down for good. But in the Marvel Universe, there's actually a special substance used to kill people with healing factors. Carbonadium. Carbonadium is a metal that was developed during the Cold War by the USSR in an attempt to recreate adamantium. And while it's not near as durable as its American counterpart, it is extremely radioactive. Its atoms are so unstable that their nuclei emit radiation in an attempt to balance them out. And characters like Deadpool and Wolverine have trouble healing while around that. Why? Well, certain radiation is actually capable of damaging DNA. Ultraviolet rays, X-rays, gamma rays, and more can cause cancer. Which, as we just discussed, is really damaged DNA on a rampage. But on top of that, one method for killing cancer is called radiotherapy. By damaging the DNA inside of cancer cells, we can stop them from dividing. Which is probably the same thing happening to Deadpool and Wolverine when they're around carbonadium. 
If that's the case, we don't even need a fictional metal from another universe to kill Deadpool. We should be able to use cytotoxins. Or cell toxins. There are over 100 chemicals out there that are deadly to cells. And more are being developed all the time to, you guessed it, fight cancer. And they should be just as capable of killing a healing factor as carbonadium. It's all in the cells. The DNA that tells Deadpool's body to repair damage. Those cancerous healing genes that will recreate every ounce of tissue as long as the code is still there. In order to kill Deadpool for good, you would have to destroy every single cell in his body. Throw him into the sun, drop a planet on him, disintegrate him completely. Universal acid, flesh-eating nanotech. If you have microscopic and precise heat vision, focus on each individual cell and just disassemble him. Erase him from existence, cure his healing factor, and then shoot him. Maybe get the artist to just stop drawing him. The point is, yes, Deadpool can die. It's just really, really hard. He even used to have an immortality curse that forced him to survive even crazier things. But at the end of the day, Deadpool is made of cells. Just like you, me, and every other plant and animal on the planet. An uncanny family resemblance that ensures, yeah, we can die, but we're all in the same boat. It's one of the few things you're guaranteed to have in common with every single person you meet. So don't worry too much about Deadpool's mortality, or your own for that matter. Sometimes it's just nice to be reminded that you're as human as everyone else. Until next time. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe!